Something that's so easily missed by a lot of leaders is that your job is to create that that funnel of those people around you and develop them in the best way possible. I think one of the most important things in developing leaders is helping them to develop their communication. This is CEOs in a Coffee Shop Talking Leadership. P3 is all about people, performance, and profits as we've talked about. At the end of 2019, large organizations, small organizations were coming to this idea of you gotta be driven by purpose. Do you see a correlation between purpose and performance, and what is that correlation that you see? For me, when you're talking about purpose, I don't think about it as necessarily a, uh, it's not a catch-all. It is something that says, I as a human being, and human beings have this intrinsic drives. We have all of these different things that are really important to us on the internal side of things. Things like tribe. Sure. We have to connect with somebody. We have to feel like we're part of each other's tribe. If we like each other, we'll do business Kind of like Simon Sinek. He talks about tribe often. Exactly. Yeah. So when we look at something like that, we have other ones such as ego, influence, health, uh, family, um, curiosity, all of these sort of intrinsic elements to us that drive different aspects of our behavior. Some people are more driven by things like justice than they are necessarily driven by things like tribe. Right. So being able to identify some of those intrinsic drivers in the individuals that you're working with or teaming with and helping them to find their drive and align it with a purpose, that's where you're gonna get the most performance out of people. So, so how do you tie that within the purpose of the business? Cause you're talking about purpose of the individual, mm -hmm. but you know, I talk to CEOs all the time about purpose of their business and they say it's to make money, okay? I look at it as what's your purpose beyond profits and then does that tie to those intrinsic drives but how do you figure that out how do you get that mesh between the two because organizations are, are struggling right now to figure that out yeah there's a lot of disengagement of employees there's people that just walk away from their jobs because a ping pong table or you know a salary <laughs> raise isn't going to necessarily do that but what you're looking for when you're trying to find and match those intrinsic drives is showing people how the work that they're doing actually matters, how it changes something, how it incorporates. So if I'm working with somebody who I've realized or recognized that their real motivation, their intrinsic drive is tribe, I'm gonna empower that person or I'm gonna try to help that person be empowered to say, this is how you contribute to the overall health of all of the tribe in this organization. If I've got somebody that's intrinsically driven by curiosity, I'm gonna look at them and say, I need you to be incredibly curious in this innovation capacity. What's a new way we can find this? How can we solve this, right? So I'm looking at those different pieces, those drivers, and saying this is how it matches to getting the football from the 50 yard line to the goal line. He, he, I was at lunch with somebody yesterday and he was telling me about a CEO that he was talking to, large tier one manufacturer here in Metro Detroit where we're actually located. And he asked the CEO, what's the purpose of your company? He didn't say profits. He said, I want to remove the pain from manufacturing. And he went on to say, I want to remove the pain from the employees and I want to remove the pain from our clients. So it was purpose beyond profits. And he knew that was ultimately going to drive the real performance of the team and of the profits themselves. And it's, it's fascinating to me. So t tell me more about some of the other sessions that you lead, because as we talk about people performance profits and really driving profits, that's what people are watching this for. What are some of the other key things that you're finding people want you to talk about? I'm finding a lot about purpose, and I, that's, that's one of the, the things that I'm passionate about. But what are some of the other things that, that Jay, that you're, you're teaching teams to do, leaders to do, to drive performance. I wanna to touch actually on what you said about that CEO and, yeah. and, and remove the pain. That's brilliant. It's, it's a brilliant use of psychological language. Our, our brain is actually motivated in two different directions, towards pleasure and oh, away yeah. from pain. Oh, yeah. So anytime that we're looking at something like a sales function, oftentimes what we're doing is selling a pain, uh, you know, selling a product that solves a pain point. Sure. So even that he's taking that and aligning that with purpose, it's a brilliant communication strategy. Yeah, no, just thought no I question. would mention that. Yeah, uh, one of the most one of the most requested things right now, and I find this to be incredibly interesting. The most requested things right now is how to deal with difficult people or difficult mm. behaviors mm. in the workplace. So I really kind of focus on the behavioral side of things, and one of the things that it just seems with you know, and there's a whole bunch of different reasons why 
conflict is continuing or becoming more and more. Some say that it's because face-to-face -face communications lessened. Some say that because of, you know, different markers in the economy, oh, yeah. Yeah. whatever those are, the challenges is people have to deal with them in the workplace in many cases. So how do you stop a high performing? You know, you've got a lot of talented people in the exact same room that are aligned with the project but maybe they haven't worked with each other before. How do you solve some of those conflicts? How do you mediate those conflicts? You mean they don't, they don't all just get along automatically? Yeah, you know, I would think so. It would, the way no. that you and I yeah, would so easily, right? But it doesn't. And uh, so that's one of the huge things that we actually address is, in some cases, it's often body language might, that might be a trigger for somebody. So I might be sitting there and having a look on my face, and in the meantime, a teammate's looking at me thinking that I'm angry or frustrated or yeah. something else and then so then they refuse to ask a question and then all of a sudden there's a tension in between those two people and neither of them really know why sometimes we know exactly sure. why we have those conflicts but trying to focus and understand and remove the behaviors from the situation and find how does my behavior then in turn affect somebody else's behavior which then in turn affects my behavior and all of a sudden we start to escalate these conflicts. You bring up an interesting one because it's it's not just the conflict once they become employees, but well, you and I have talked a lot about this, this body language, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, I had you come out and do that for, for my team and a discussion on that. And think about doing this. If you're half of you watching this are business leaders, the other half are HR and talent acquisition people. If you could read somebody's body language when you're interviewing, the value and understanding kind of more about how they think, not just in what the words that they say, but in the way that their body responds to that question. And that says a lot about somebody, doesn't it? It really does. It says more than what is actually said in the spoken word, in my opinion. You know, when I'm actually doing interviewing or helping people with interviews or even using body language in the different ways that we have before, helping select juries or helping salespeople understand like uh, whether somebody is actually interested in buying, by the time that they walk in the door, are they that the person that's gonna walk around to retail and just, they're there to look. You can actually see these signals from yeah, people in no the question. way that they carry themselves. So in the interviewing process, I mean, how does somebody handle themselves? Are they, are they leaning forward? Are they leaning back? Are they doing an aggressive posture? Do they keep their hands on the table? Do they have their feet dangling? Are they nervous? You know, do you recognize that their nervousness changed after about 45 seconds in? Because that's when the anxiety starts yeah. to pull back. All of those different individual markers can be analyzed and give you a much larger profile of who you're actually interacting with and communicating with. So how did you learn all this stuff? Is it from actually practicing and leading people? Is it academic? Is it a combination of both? Combination, I would yeah. say. Uh, I was actually, so I liked theater when I was, when I was younger and in high nice. school, I was in the theater and, and you know, obviously you study movements, mechanics, facial expressions, and all of those different elements. So that was something that I was like so fascinated of how somebody could pretend in a way that was believable to somebody else. Uh, when I was in college, I studied nonverbal communication and I went back and I studied psychology and neuroscience and how does our body or our brain react to different situations? What are those drivers of those behaviors? And then I watched and started to notice little tiny things, little ways in which people moved, how they smiled, sure. whether somebody was, yeah, it was good to meet you. And all of a sudden you can see that just slight change in the eyes. And it's just like, yeah, real good to meet you. And it's like, okay. Yeah. So utilizing that and, you know, in a, in a variety of contexts, whether it was for work, for business, or whether it was just in some cases, uh, even in dating, you know, it did, didn't sure. matter oh, yeah. what it was. It yeah. was understanding and being able to read the signals and accurately, accurately explain what they meant and how it was gonna predict the next interaction that we were gonna have. Okay, so last thing, yeah. as we think about 2020 and people putting together their plans for 2020, hopefully all of your plans are already done. But if you were talking to a leader and they said, give me that one thing I should really focus on in 2020 from a leadership perspective. We talked about a lot, we've talked about purpose, we've talked about communication. In your opinion, what would it be? I really would say that vision and aligning people's purpose with that vision is one of the most critical things. I mean, I've learned that from you, but it's also one of those pieces that I've truly tried to follow in mind is at some point in time as a leader, I realized that I had a lot going on up here, but I was not communicating that properly. Yeah. So I thought, the pathway's clear, look where we're going, look what we're doing and so on and so forth. And there was still that element of people going, but, but why, yep. but why? And uh, when I started to open up my communication as a leader, 
and I started to be more vulnerable to letting questions being asked or people challenging that and, and helping to then bridge this through good communication, I started to find that the people really started to put forward more effort. They tried more, they wanted more, they, could, they saw the end zone. And that was really something that was important to me. So aligning that and being able to communicate that more openly and effectively is something I think is absolutely critical for especially incoming employees and the new age workers that we're seeing today. That's why purpose is so important right now. The one thing that I want to make sure everybody understands is to me, leadership is all about influence, mm -hmm. right? And here, but here's the two sides of influence. You can be a positive influence by doing all the things that we've been talking about, the things that you teach, the things that I teach. Or if we choose not to do that, we can be a absolute negative influence. So let's think about it. Everybody we come in, in contact with, even here, at the coffee and cream in Livonia, we are influencing them. So the way that you respond to the person who took our coffee order, and they were awesome, by the way. They were but, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Give, them, give them the plug for it. But everything we do influences everybody we come in contact with. So you're talking about ways to positively influence. I don't think enough leaders, I didn't, sounds like you didn't, we don't understand that piece of it. The amount of influence we have over people, the amount of influence we have with teams, with our kids, with our spouses, our clients, all of that. So we've got to really focus on purpose. We've got to focus on communication. There's so much more to be said, but we only have enough time to do some basics here. Yeah. Last closing words. Yeah, on that uh, point of influence, when you realize how important it is and your behaviors and the behaviors that you exhibit, whether people you think people are watching or whether you don't think people are watching, people are watching. They see it. Yeah. It's the same as the way that you treat the waitress or the waiter or the janitor or anybody else. Somebody is watching and noticing that. And being able to use that understanding of how people understand behavior is, for me, one of the quintessential things that a leader has to be able to do. And building that influence is critical. Jay, thanks for your time today. Look, all of you who are watching at this point, you have an option. You can take all this information we've talked about and do absolutely nothing with it or you can choose to take this information and go further. If you need help applying this, if you need to understand more about communication, about how do you define purpose, how do you really take your business and start to drive performance? You've got two resources here. Jay, how do they reach you? Uh, you can reach me at Coeus Creative Group. That's uh, the company and it is coeuscreativegroup.com and that's C-O-E-U-S. And that is the Titan God of intellect in Greek mythology <laughs> nice. before anybody asks, but coeuscreativegroup.com. You can reach me, Steve Lois, at stevelois.com or qualigence.com, Q-U-A-L-I-G-E-N-C-E.com. It's your choice to determine if you're gonna do something with this. Please make the right choice for your team.